Want some new merch? Check out teespring.com. Good evening, everyone. My name is Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and I finally loaded. Um, so I literally was just getting into the game, and I think Roblox might be having a problem right now because everything is super duper slow. Um, I know it's not me. I've checked my ping. My ping is speeding away. So let's just jump in here, and I will take a look to see if there's something going on. Uh, let me take a look at the about page. Um, last time it was updated was on 9-11. There's, there's not been any updates since then, so... It's not something that's new. Something's going on. Mm, anyhow, I figure we'd just come in, chop up a few trees, and discuss the week, discuss the day, and see, uh, see how everybody's feeling, because, um, October 1st is two days away. Oh, no, it's, it's tomorrow. So, October 1st starts the hunt. The hunt for the trees, everyone. The, uh, the long-awaited October, uh, for the spook trees and for the sinister wood. Now, spook trees is a one in 100. I think that's what Jack said. Oh, 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 I forgot. I needed to, um, okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Um, oh wait, no, I have a tower. Actually, no, 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 no. Here, let's do a reset right here. Reset, Ooh. yes, throw those out. Now what I want to do is I'm going to place a blueprint right there. That's that's where I need a blueprint. So let's go ahead and build a ladder. Nope, ladder, ladder, ladder. There it is. And we're going to go and do a rotate, like a that. And I'm going to have to move. So right, right there. I think that's that's where we're going to need it. <laughs> okay. And come on, come on, come on. Two, three, four. I should probably build them before I put them up there, huh? So, um, let's go ahead and grab our Twittery Axe. Tweet, tweet. And let's go ahead and move that back over to the first slot, like that. And what I'm going to do is push this out of the way. Grab this. I'm going off Jack's recommendations. I haven't done this in the past, but um, I have talked about it and I've told people about it so if you take and you place ladders right in the center of your base right where you spawn then when you reset you'll appear on top of those things oh come on come on there we go so uh let's just go ahead and create a bunch of these laddery ladders one two Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. How many do we have here? We have four, is that right? One, two, three, four. So four. Uh, let's do five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's going to be. 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, come on, Kevin, 7, Ten, that's forty. One. Uh oh, uh oh. Three, four, five. Oh, what's going on here? Did you see that? Oh, oh! It removes the last blueprint if you're not using them. Oh, dang it! So we're gonna have to. Ah, uh, uh, poop. 
No, we're not. We're not gonna have to poop. Uh, uh, just, no, we're gonna have to uh, build them beforehand, aren't we? I don't know that that was quite the amount. Oh, okay, that worked. Good deal. One, two. You come here. Yeah, we're just gonna use that one. That's not enough to be twosies. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I should be able to just move these, right? And place them on top of like this. One, move, two, move, three, move, four. Now a lot of you might be asking, Code, why, why are you doing this? And I'll show you in just a second. So when I reset, oh, come on, come on, perspective. There we go. And last one. Everything's even. Everything's the right direction. Looks beautiful. So when you reset like this, uh, reset. You can instantly and automatically jump to the very top like this. Boop. So, just by resetting, I'm all on automatically up here. I can get a nice, good look at the world around me, uh, but we're gonna need a lot more, so. Uh, and if you don't understand the phys physics of that, the spawn point is right here in, in where this solid piece is. Because, my, or because Roblox can't place me there, that's a solid object, it moves me to the highest point that can be occupied, which is up here because there's a ladder all the way up to the, that point. And that's that's for infinity. So like if you kept building on here at that spot, you could eventually reach the uh, stratosphere. Well, they, there's, there's a certain point, and I think it's after 10,000 units or something like that, that when you get to that point, there's that like reality starts to break. Because that's the that's the area that's the height. Whenever you, I'm sorry, my ADHD medicine. I did not take it today. Um, I just forgot this morning, and I am kind of all over the place. I've been programming on the mud. Um, been programming some interface, and oh, 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 I will show you what that is real quick. So I know a lot of you have been asking, what is the mud? What 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 are you talking about, code? And I'm going to show it to you real quick. Uh, mud. Mudlet. <laughs> so normally what it looks like is this. Um, boom. Fade, 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 fade. So this is what it normally looks like. It's completely text-based and it's and it's an adventure game. It's all text-based, all right? The problem with it being completely text-based is it's overwhelming for people like my son, uh, a little bit overwhelming for me because there's so much text. Now, over the course of the years, 25 years to be exact, I've gotten used to it. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, I'm bourbon in the microphone. So um, just real quick, I'm just going to jump in as a guest and kind of show you if I do a look. I'm currently standing at the newbie stand. I can go uh, south, west, west, east, east, north. Like you, you can move around and do things. Uh, for example, if I go to north, there's a peasant standing here. I can look at the fruit stand that's in front of them. This is the entry yard. And there's six apples, uh, eight bananas, and I can do stuff like buy apple. You purchase an apple. I can hit I for my inventory. And it says, hey, you're carrying an apple. Cool, what's my score? If I hit score, it shows my intelligence, my strength, my, my dexterity, constitution, charisma. It's Dungeons and Dragons online. More information is, is in my um, Discord, or if you wanna leave a comment down below, I can, I can do that. Or just search Gateway Mud. That's Gateway Mud, like that. Gateway Mud. And that's that's the mud that I play on. So, if you guys are all like, "Oh, code, what? What? Is, oh, wait, 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 wait! I was going to show you the thing. The thing. Okay. So, uh, fade, 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 fade. So this is what it normally looks like, and this is what I've been working on. So, 
Nope, not that one. Not that one. Disconnect. Play. Is it that one? This is the one that I've been working on. This one has a health bar and it's got a, a, a spell point bar. It's got a map. It's got a little area up here that captures the tells and the text and the, the messages that get sent to you and it puts them off to the side so you don't lose them. I'm making a nice interface for Gateway so it feels more alive. And the cool thing about this, the, the reason I'm preaching like this is because all the scripts are in Lua. Like everything that I created right here, the interface, the, the map, the tells, it's all written in Lua. And you can write your own Lua scripts. So it's programming that I've been doing for the last four years that just, wait a second, I know this stuff. So, I know, I know, I know. That's not the reason that you guys came here. You came here for some lumber, we're doing lumber, and I've just been, I've been very distracted. So, I just wanted to let you know what I've been doing. So, I hope you will join me. I got Fezzik into it. Uh, Fezzik used to play MUDs. I got uh, a couple of the people from Discord into it, and I'm getting more people interested in it. And hopefully, like, I can liven it back up because it's a lot more fun with more people. The crazy thing is, I can communicate and talk in there better than I can in like real life or voice chat because it, it forces you to think of what you're about to say. And maybe I'm just more used to it, I don't know. I don't feel so socially awkward when I'm inside the mud, if that makes sense. Because I know that everybody else that's in there is kind of a nerd like I am. What's kind of cool is, um, all the people that I grew up with playing inside the mud have gone on to become something pretty great. Like, they, they're... I haven't met a single person that's in there that hasn't gone and done something big in their life. So it's, it's kind of cool that this place that we all kind of congregate to, kind of all joined a place of fitting in for us turned into this place of lots of brilliant people that that's cool to me that's very cool so <clears throat> i mean there's a, there's two that got their like phd's one of them's a psychologist another one's um, another one's a jazz player and he's like world renowned jazz player for like Beyonce and Justin Bieber and like Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, some, some big names. And that's really cool because something that would force you to play a game that's completely text-based that you get interested in doesn't seem like a forerunner to what you would do in your life but it has a little bit of a testament to like, hey, I played Bud and I went to the Marine Corps. I had a wife and a family and kids and I've written a book and I became a YouTuber and uh, I went to college, got two degrees, application development analyst. I'm, I think I'm smart. Uh, I'm probably, probably not common sense smart. I mean, yeah. There's a lot of common sense I'm missing. <laughs> but it's neither here nor there. Well actually it's it's completely here, but I I love playing the mud. I like I like talking about the mud whenever I'm playing inside here, <laughs> inside Roblox. I kind of wish there were a parsing machine or some kind of parser that we could use inside Roblox that would work kind of like a MUD. And MUD stands for Multi-User Dungeon. Old school text-based video games. <laughs> oh, oh, if you do go and play it, map everything. And I'm, I'm not joking. Map everything. If you, if you don't believe me, this this is my current mud map for the character that I'm playing. And just so you can see, let's go to let's go to Sirius here for a second. 
every single one of those dots that's a that's one of the rooms and it's got a description and items and I've got notes out here to the side and just a little obsessive just saying but it's fun I mean it is very fun it is the most intriguing game that I've ever played and it's completely text-based I mean I've been playing it for 25 years on and off through some of the years but for the most part I'm still finding areas. I'm still discovering things inside the mud that I didn't know were there. There could be a room that I walked over two years ago and there was a secret entrance to a tomb or um, a rowboat that was on the shore that I didn't look at close enough last time and didn't realize that I could actually row the rowboat. Stuff like that. So. Uh, it does get, take some getting used to because a lot of people are not playing or are not used to playing games without interfaces so and I'm, I'm working on an interface eventually I should have something pretty cool for you guys <sighs> I love programming so today um, well actually yesterday and today I was tasked with creating kind of like a report for our business system. So I'll, I'll just tell you, our business system it runs off an old AS400 backend. And if you guys know what an AS400 is, it's, a, <clears throat> it's like a green screen terminal service. It's all text-based. And it presents you with green screen text. It's old school terminal. It's a it's AS one hundred. I don't know any way to like explain it. Anyhow, that's that's what it is. Excuse me. And I can automate. I can program bots and scripts to automatically do things like to automatically log you in, use your username and password, um, go to a specific screen, run a specific report, scrape information off the screen itself, and, and put it into an Excel sheet. So that's what I was doing today, is I was um, automating a report that would normally take about six hours. I mean, it was it was taking up somebody's entire day. So you have to imagine, if you're getting paid, and I don't know the person's salary, this is just, a, just an imagination. Um, let's say it's a $50,000 job year, right? So you get $50,000 to be the reporter of whatever this thing is. So that time that you spent going in, running each one of these these reports, pulling out the information, putting it into an Excel sheet, six hours. Like you know it's coming at this specific time during the week, and you've you've got to get it done. And now I just I'm not taking over that person's job. I don't want to replace them. But I do want to make like help them out and make their job easier. So now I freed up six hours of time because my report, I tested it just before I left work today and it takes about five minutes. I took six hours of work and compressed it into a five minute report run. It's really fast. Not only that, uh, I'm not using an Excel sheet, I'm actually pulling it over and I'm going to be pushing it into a database where it is now indexed and searchable. So instead of just emailing this Excel sheet out to a whole bunch of people, all the people can come to one central location and grab all their information at once. I'm creating the, the web interface for it as well. This might be boring to a lot of people, but for those of you who are paying attention, Thank you, and I hope it really sparks some interest in programming and wanting to do development, because that's what I do, and I love it. I love that that's my job. Used to, before, I was a correctional officer, like, and I was in the Marine Corps, and I did delivery, like food delivery there for a little bit. So if you guys didn't know, I'm not a full-time YouTuber. I know, surprise, surprise. I am a dad who has a full-time job, two kids and a wife, and I've got a full-time life. So a lot of a lot of people ask me all the time, "Code, can you come play?" I I can't. I'm literally 
at work or I'm in the middle of dinner or I'm hanging out with my kids playing Among Us inside the Discord with some friends. Like, that last one sounded kind of personal. No, that's that's me spending time with my kids. Um, it's, it's hard to balance YouTube and to get everyone to realize that the time that I do give up, I mean, that is completely my free time. This is like what I'm doing right now. I'm recording, right, to make a video for YouTube, but it's not, it's not like a scheduled thing. I didn't, I, I don't have free time to myself to go and just do YouTube videos. It's not my job. It's not part of my job description. How do I explain? That's, that's a hard one. So, for all the moms out there, for all the dads out there, for all the grandparents out there who are like, I just don't have time to go and create videos. Yeah, you do. You can. You can do this. If I'm doing this, you can do this. And I encourage you to do so. I encourage you to grab a copy of OBS, the online broadcast software. I encourage you to go and start creating videos with your kids, with your grandkids, with your significant other and go and play become a gamer if you're not a gamer already become one <laughs> so <sighs> a lot of people ask me for tips play what makes you happy have fun engage with your fans just be honest that's all it takes well code there's got to be some other secret there isn't this stuff, this stuff right here, this, these, the lights, the the microphone, none of that matters. Even even my camera, my camera. I'm going, I'm going to do this just because I'm being very ADHD at the moment. But this is my garage. This is my studio. Kind of messy, huh? Kind of looks like your rooms sometime. Or like my kids' rooms. But, I mean, it's just because we got a lot of stuff. And we've got garage sales coming up. Well, next year we have garage sales coming up. So, during the summertime. But that's it. I mean, I, I don't have a studio that I go and sit down in. I don't have <clears throat> these nice computer setups literally I've got the nice the, the nice computer that I purchased with the book sales and it wasn't even the book sales like whenever I wrote the book um, they gave me a check at the beginning before I started and then a check after I got finished so I used the check at the very beginning to move all of my YouTube -y stuff off of my work laptop not that I was using the work laptop for YouTube my work laptop, my boss, he gave me uh, permission to go and hey, build your own, tell us why, and I'll go and purchase it. And I ended up getting a Lenovo Y70 gaming laptop. It had an NVIDIA 8, GTX 860 or something like that inside on board. And he goes, that's a gaming laptop. You're, we're, we're running business here. You, you can't do that. And I went except for the fact you've got me doing this, 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 and I'm running all of it at the same time. I need a high-end graphics card so I can take the processes that I'm using, my programming stuff, and push it onto the graphics card and get it off the CPU so the CPU is not doing the workload. And it wasn't until I showed him what I could do with the programming laptop that he goes, okay, I can't, I can't really argue your point. I said, good, because this is what I needed. So... <sighs> Anyhow, that was that was before I even started the YouTube -y stuff. Um, I had a really good graphics card, so doing the YouTube -y stuff kind of just went along with it. Like you gotta have a gaming laptop to do YouTube -y stuff, and that's where I grew up on. You know, most of the stuff that you see is me on a laptop that was built for work. No, it's been years. So that laptop's now decommissioned. I'm now on a different desktop 
and I have remote access that is much better than it was back in, what, 2010? Have I been? I've been working for the same company for almost 10 years. Whoa. Don't I get something for working for somebody for 10 years? I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's see. I've been working for this company longer than I've been a YouTuber. I've been working for this company as long, like the same age as my son, because he's 10. Wow. They turn 11 and 14 this year. That's scary. Well, daughter turns 14, Oliver turns 11. And they've been playing more Among Us and like more adult games, which is so cool. Like I'm so, I'm so proud. I'm a gamer dad who's like super proud, especially that my son, he like, he loves Team Fortress 2. Now, I'm not gonna lie, Team Fortress 2 has got some cringe to it, okay? The voice chat on there is just atrocious sometimes. But I also understand that my son, he knows what he can and can't say. He knows how to act, knows how to speak to people. And I tell him, when people start making fun of you or if they start getting mean, just turn it off and ignore them because they're just doing it to feel better about themselves. They're, they're doing it to, tr to try and get a rise out of you. Do not rise to the occasion. Do not stoop to their level. Whatever motivational speech you got to tell yourself, if somebody's making fun of you or if somebody's bullying you, you don't have to take it. And you don't have to prove yourself to anyone ever. If, if somebody is, <clears throat> let's just say somebody has the audacity to try and use gay as an insult. So you're sitting there, you're playing away, playing around the game and stuff like that. And somebody says, you're gay. Turn it off. You don't have to, you don't have to respond to that. And in fact, I would probably say go and report them. First off, we're trying to use gay in 2020 as some kind of insult idiot second because if they're doing it to you that most likely means that they're they've done it to somebody else so it needs to be reported and i know i'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this for my comment section but don't feed trolls that's my best offer that's my best thing that i could ever tell you do not feed bullies do not give in be like a tree because it's really hard to argue with a tree. It's really hard to prove a point with a tree. It's really hard to insult a tree. It's still gonna hurt. When people call you names, when people make fun of you, it still hurts. It doesn't mean that you have to let it hurt. You know it's not true, right? Um, one of the questions here, I, I don't know if I can show this or not, but I'm, I'm going to. Even if it demonetizes my video, even, I don't I don't care. Will Wheaton, I, I highly look up to this guy. And not for the fact that he's really cool, <laughs> but he's a, he is a super uber nerd like I am. Uh, in fact, I, w I would claim that he is more nerdy than I am. Will Wheaton. Bullying. Okay. Just real quick. Because I, I I feel like this needs to be heard. And so huge shout out to CG Photo Gcon. I don't know the name. <laughs> Where is Roblox scene? There it is. And that Well, maybe. Oh, do I have a filter on? Hold on, I might have a filter on. Yeah, I have a filter on. There we go. So. No, that's still not working. Hmm. Well, I'll just go to Roblox Studio then. There we go. So this is this is by CG Photocon, uh, Photo G Con, and it's Will Wheaton answering a little girl's uh, question. <laughs> When you were a kid, were you, um, were 
you call it the third, and if so, how did you deal with it? When I was a little boy, I was called a nerd all the time because I didn't like sports. Uh, I loved to read. I liked math and science. I thought school was really cool. And um, it hurt a lot because it's, it's never okay when a person makes fun of you for something like you didn't choose. You know, we don't choose to be nerds. We can't help it that we like these things. And we shouldn't apologize for liking these things. I wish that I could tell you that there is a really easy way to just not care. But the truth is it hurts. But here's the thing that you might be able to understand. As a matter of fact, I'm confident you'll be able to understand this because you asked this question. When a person makes fun of you, when a person is cruel to you, it has nothing to do with you. It's not about what you said. It's not about what you did. It's not about what you love. It's about them feeling bad about themselves. They feel sad. They don't get positive attention from their parents. They don't feel as smart as you. They don't understand the things that you understand. Maybe one of their parents is really pushing them to be a cheerleader or a baseball player or an engineer or something that they just don't want to do. So they take that out on you because they can't go and be mean with a person who's actually hurting you. So, when a person is cruel to you like that, I know that this is hard, but honestly, the kind and best reaction is to, to pity them. And don't let them make you feel bad because you love them. Maybe find out what they love and talk about how they love it. I bet you find out that a person who loves Tetherball loves Tetherball exactly the same way that you love Dr. Hooper. But you just love different things. And I will tell you this, it absolutely gets better as you get older. And, and I know it's really hard when you're in school and you're surrounded by the same 400 people a day that pick on you and make you feel bad about yourself. But there's 50,000 people here this weekend who went through the exact same thing and were all doing really well. <laughs> Don't you ever let a person make you feel bad because you love something they decided is only for nerds. Your loving parents for you. Thanks for your So, for those of you who have been in my comments before who said, my friends make fun of me for playing Roblox. My friends make fun of me for watching you. Ignore them. I love you guys very much. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Will Wheaton, if you ever watch this, I love you, dude. Uh, I love your Ready Player One read through. Um, Cl uh, Ernest Klein, if you're watching this, I love your books. I can't wait for Ready Player Two to come out. Um, that's it. That's it. I love you guys very much. <laughs> Have a great day or night or whatever the case may be. And we'll talk to you soon. Oh, wait. Hold on. I got to do the burp. I bounced. <laughs> I'm a bouncy boy. Love you guys very much. Have a great night. And we'll talk to you very soon. Outro. Want some new merch? Check out teespring.com. Outro.